In this video, I'm going in extreme details and exactly how to apply makeup for beginners. So if you have no knowledge about makeup application, but you really want to learn everything you need to know about makeup and how to apply it, then this video is definitely for you. As a beginner, it's so hard buying expensive makeup, especially if you don't know how to use them. So all the products I'll be using today are affordable products that you can find in your local drugstore, and I will list all the products in the description box down below. When I first started learning how to apply makeup, I always used to wonder like, why is my makeup not coming out good? Like, what am I doing wrong? But I realized that I was missing one step that was the most important step before applying any makeup on and that is not using a primer if you're not familiar with what a primer is essentially it's a product that you apply before any makeup and it creates a barrier between your skin and the makeup I like to think about it like sanding or priming wood before painting it by applying a primer to your skin you're creating a really nice smooth and even canvas for your makeup to adhere to this is going to prevent your makeup from being absorbed into your pores and it's really going to help grip the makeup onto your skin which will give you a flawless finish however it's very very important to note that not all primers are created equally so depending on your skin type you want to select your primer so you might not be using the same type of primer as another person that has a different skin type if you have oily skin I would recommend getting a matte primer this is going to help control oils on your skin it's gonna make your makeup last on longer because the oils won't be peeking through your pores a really good one is the elf poreless putty primer I would recommend applying this all over your skin if you have oily skin but if you have combination skin which is a mixture of oily and dry skin I would recommend applying this primer only on your t-zone area but if you normally have problems with getting your makeup to last on longer then I would recommend getting a gripping primer such as this elf power grip primer this is a really good one especially if you want your makeup to last on all day this primer is going to help grip your makeup so that it stays on your skin without moving around but if you have a really dry skin like me then you would just need a primer that is extremely moisturizing to prevent your skin from drying out while you're wearing the makeup one that I would highly recommend is the Milani supercharged dewy primer I find this to be one of the best primers for dry skin because it helps to seal a lot of moisture on your skin preventing your makeup from being absorbed by your skin because of dehydration it's very important for your skin to look really moisturized and hydrated before applying any makeup on because if your skin is dry or patchy it's not going to blend seamlessly so even if you have oily skin or you have combination skin it's very important to moisturize before applying any makeup so after you've applied your primer the next step in your makeup routine is foundation this is honestly the most important and crucial step in your makeup routine when it comes to complexion the main purpose of foundation is to provide coverage on your skin to help even out all the darkness discoloration it just gives you a really nice smooth base but it's so important for you to choose the right shade of foundation please always make sure that your foundation matches your skin tone your undertone and your skin type don't be out here looking like oompa loompa okay it's just like building a foundation for your house if the foundation of the house does not stand well the whole house will be ruined it's the same way with makeup if your foundation is not the right shade it doesn't match your skin type or your undertone your whole makeup look could be ruined so to make sure that your foundation is the right color for your skin you want to swatch out the foundation on your jawline to make sure it matches your natural skin on your face and your neck and chest area as these are usually the closest to your natural skin tone also when choosing your foundation shade you want to consider the type of coverage you're going for this will depend on your personal preference just depending on how much coverage you need so they're light coverage medium coverage and full coverage foundations. if you have clear skin with no acne or discoloration then a light coverage foundation would work perfectly but if you have blemishes and uneven skin and you're looking to cover up enough, then I would recommend a medium coverage foundation to a full coverage foundation. But it's also important to remember to choose a foundation that works for your skin type. So you have to know whether you have dry combination or oily skin to figure out which foundation would work best for your skin type. I always recommend matte foundations or oil-free foundations if you have oily or combination skin, such as the L'Oreal True Match 
super blendable foundation but if you find that you sweat a lot or your skin just gets super oily and moist then you want a waterproof or transfer proof foundation and one that I would recommend is the Milani conceal and perfect two-in-one foundation this is a longer lasting foundation so if you find makeup products don't settle well on your skin and tend to move around this would be the perfect foundation for you but if you have dry and sensitive skin then I would recommend a foundation that helps to hydrate your skin and doesn't take away moisture and a really good one is the Neutrogena serum foundation this type of foundation will help nourish your skin because you have sensitive skin you want to make sure that you're not drawing away any moisture or hydration from your skin once you found your perfect foundation that matches your skin tone your undertone and your skin type you want to choose the right tool to blend out your foundation so if you're looking for a really even natural finish I would recommend using a beauty sponge to blend out your makeup this will help absorb excess product so that you're not having too much product sitting on your skin which can eventually lead to cakey makeup but if you're looking to get more coverage because you want to cover up right a lot on your skin I would recommend going in with a brush because this type of tool does not absorb excess product it really helps keep the foundation on your skin rather than on the brush itself so that is why you want to make sure that you're using the right tool that works well for what you're going for I also find beauty sponges to work best on dry skin because it's damp it has a little bit of moisture from water than a brush that's normally dry if you have really dry skin and you're using this type of brush to blend it it's not gonna have any moisture to help your makeup blend well so when blending out the foundation I always like to focus on the perimeter of my face this will allow you to focus the majority of the foundation where you need the most coverage it's also important to avoid applying the foundation under your eyes this is because the skin in this area is thinner and it's more delicate and applying foundation can actually make it look worse by settling in your fine lines under your eyes and wrinkles so instead you can leave space around that area to apply your concealer so if you're gonna opt for a beauty sponge you always want to make sure to dampen your sponge and make sure that there's no excess water that comes out of the sponge and always use a clean beauty sponge a clean beauty sponge is going to allow your makeup to blend out flawlessly it's not gonna leave any patchiness you're not going to be transferring any old makeup to your new makeup because it's clean after applying your foundation your face might look flat in structure like there's no dimension so the next step is to apply your concealer to add dimension back to your face when we look at our natural face this side of our face is usually darker and this side is usually brighter so we add concealer there to brighten up our skin so that we look more awake and natural you want to focus the concealer only on the areas of your skin where light naturally reflects so if you put a flashlight right in front of your face you'll see that it reflects under your eyes on your forehead you can see a little reflection right there on your chin and down the bridge of your nose you also want to use a concealer that is close to the color of your natural skin under your eyes to help cover up the darkness and then add a little bit of something brighter to help brighten it up but you always want to remember the type of concealer you use determines how it's gonna look on your skin I almost never recommend using a thick creamy concealer such as this one under your eyes because this skin under our eyes tends to be very delicate and we tend to have fine lines wrinkles and using a thick creamy concealer such as this one by NARS will crease eventually at the end of the day your under eyes will look cakey and it's just not gonna last long so as a beginner I would recommend liquid concealers instead because those tend to settle under our eyes a little bit better they tend to blend really well and don't move around during the day so your concealer is gonna stay flawless under your eyes a really good concealer that I love is this IRL concealer by makeup revolution this is a really good affordable one that hydrates under your eyes it doesn't move and it's also long-lasting so when you're applying concealer you want to give a balance so you don't want to apply too much to the point where it's gonna get really cakey and won't last long and you want to apply enough to cover up discoloration under your eyes so that it looks nice and bright also where you place the concealer is very important darker areas tend to be around the inner corners and the outer corners of your eyes so I always like to focus the concealer on those areas to cover up the discoloration and brighten up your complexion without applying too much now I 
know my previous makeup for beginners video I said you want to apply it all over in a triangle that used to be the technique until nowadays we came to find out that we actually don't need that much concealer we just need a little bit to cover up darkness and this will allow your makeup to last all longer without caking up under your eyes because you're not putting too much as you can see the shade of concealer is a little bit lighter than my skin but it's not too light to the point where it won't cover up the darkness under my eyes you always want to select a shade that is about two to three shades lighter than your natural skin to make sure that you're covering up discoloration at the same time it looks lighter than your foundation and to blend it out I like to use the tip of the beauty sponge also make sure that your beauty sponge is still damp and not wet and to blend it out you just want to lightly very lightly tap on that concealer to blend it out don't go too hard because you're going to absorb majority of the concealer and this is going to allow you to leave enough coverage under your eyes to make sure that your under eyes look nice and bright and you don't see any darkness under your eyes if you want that full beat that the girlies be doing that their makeup looks really full coverage and snatched then you can add this step to your makeup routine so remember the first one we added is two to three shades lighter so you want to go in with another concealer that is four to five shades lighter than your skin you want to place this type of concealer right in the inner corners of your eyes close to the nose bridge and when blending it out you only want to focus it around this area right here don't drag the concealer all the way down here or right there because this is going to give you more of a natural finish and this will give you more of a brighter under eye if you focus it only on the inner corner part and as you can see that just instantly brightened up my skin it doesn't look unnatural because I focused it only at the inner corners of my eyes and didn't drag it all the way there and that will give you like that really nice snatched full coverage under eye look while concealer is used to brighten and to highlight certain areas contour is used to add depth and dimension so when you apply concealer you're essentially doing the opposite of contouring you're adding shadows back to your skin to give it structure when you apply concealer you're essentially doing the opposite of contouring by making certain parts of your face more pronounced which is the center of your face so it's important to balance this out by adding shadows both of these together will give you structure which we naturally have on our skin so it's important to add dimension by applying contour on the areas that naturally look darker such as your cheekbones your hairline your jawline and the bridge of your nose and to achieve the best results you always want to use a contour shade two to three shades darker than your natural skin but I always like to use a contour that is easy to blend because it gives you more of a natural contour look one that I really love is this Milani liquid contour they have so many different shades for your skin which I absolutely love because it becomes really easy to choose one that matches your skin tone and it's also a really easy to blend contour so it's very beginner friendly it won't look too harsh it won't look too intense it's going to blend really easily especially if you're beginner trying to practice how to blend so I like to apply about three to four dots right where I see that harsh line or that shadow so I normally like to suck my lips in to see where that natural contour is before placing it this allows me to make sure that I'm placing it exactly where it needs to be I also like to stop halfway where my cheekbones are so that I can drag it downwards while blending so that it fades out to blend out a liquid contour I like using a damp beauty sponge very similar to the one that I use for foundation and concealer because it blends it out much better as you can see it's not too harsh it's not too dark it looks very natural it's brought back much needed structure to my face you also want to place a little bit on your forehead area this will give the illusion that your forehead has a little bit of structure and it's not as big as the foundation makes it look like and honestly if you have a very small forehead I would absolutely skip contouring it because your forehead already looks small a lot of people contour to dim down the structure of their face so if your forehead is already small you don't need to contour 
over it to make it look even smaller. I also like to place contour on my jawline to differentiate between my neck and my jawline so that they don't look like one. And as you can see, this gives you a much lifted jawline, giving it a better structure. Now for nose contour, I always like to avoid applying it directly on my nose bridge because you can apply too much. So instead you wanna take an angle brush like this one and you want to take a little bit of the nose contour product on the brush directly and then apply it down the bridge of your nose. This will prevent you from applying too much product and you wanna just drag that down your nose bridge to contour your nose. And as you can see, this gives you more of a natural nose contour than applying it directly on your nose bridge. When it comes to powders, these are more versatile makeup products that come in so many different forms and they also serve so many different purposes. Sometimes it can be really difficult to know exactly what setting powder do you need to set which part of your face. So it's very important to understand the different types of powders and why you should be using them. So firstly, powders come in two different forms. They come in loose form and they come in pressed form. Form. Loose powders have a mineral-like consistency, kind of similar to sand, while pressed powder is more compact and it comes in a pan. But it's important to note that these two types of powders are all powders. They just have two different consistencies. I like to think about this like liquid water and ice. Both of them are water. They just have two different forms. One of them is solid and the other one is liquid. And it's also important to find a powder that works for your skin type. Oil absorbing powders are really great for those with oily skin or combination skin to really help absorb excess oils on your skin throughout the day with your makeup if you have more dry skin I would recommend using a radiant powder or a hydrating setting powder these are not oil absorbing so they don't mattify your skin they leave your skin feeling very comfortable so now that we know the different forms of powders and which one is best for your skin type, you wanna decide which type of powder to use. Now the type of powder is normally within the name of the powder. So for instance, this is the Wet n Wild setting powder. So this is a loose setting powder. Because it says it's a setting powder, it's normally used to set your makeup. Setting your makeup makes your makeup not move around your skin, so you can use this to set your concealer because concealer tends to move around a lot. But there's also a different type of setting powder that is called a translucent powder. A translucent powder is more veil, it's more natural, so if you're going for a natural finish makeup look, you don't want too much coverage, you don't want your under eyes to be really bright, I would recommend going in with a translucent powder because this is finely milled, so it's really smoothing under your eyes and doesn't add too much coverage. But you also have setting powders that come in pressed form. These types of powders are are very similar to the loose powders these are just more smoothing under your eyes because they come compacted in a pan and last but not least we have a powder foundation so a powder foundation is normally used in replacement of a liquid foundation some people use this on top of their liquid foundation to make it stay in place but it's very important to note that powder foundations have a lot of coverage so when you're applying it on top of your liquid foundation it can get very cakey if you don't control how much you're applying so as a beginner, what I would recommend you getting is a loose setting powder. So you want to get a shade that is lighter than your concealer to set your concealer. And if you have oily or combination skin and you find your foundation not sitting really well on your skin, I would recommend getting a pressed powder such as like a powdered foundation. A little bit of this on top of your liquid foundation will set it in place to make sure it doesn't move. So I would say these two are the most essential for a beginner. So to apply your setting powder, I would highly recommend getting a powder puff. So a powder puff is about $1, especially if you're getting it from Amazon. It comes in a pack of for $6 to $12. These are honestly really good because they don't absorb powder compared to something like a sponge or a brush. It allows you to use as little powder as possible so that you can build it up and making sure that you're not caking up your under eyes. So you want to pick up the powder directly onto the powder puff about this much but don't go immediately and apply it from the powder 
the most important step is to swirl it at the back of your hand. This is going to smoothen out the powder so that when you set your concealer, it gives you a really nice smooth blend. When you go in and directly apply it after picking it up, it will cause patchiness under your eyes and that could ruin your concealer. As you can see, it looks really smooth on the powder puff, but right before setting it, you wanna go in with a sponge and blend out any creases that, that you've gotten from just talking or just sitting around so that you don't set those creases. This is gonna help your concealer last under your eyes for a longer period without creasing. Then immediately go in with your powder puff and you wanna press it underneath your eyes to set it. You just wanna gently tap that right underneath your eyes to set it. Don't move it back and forth because you're going to move the concealer. You want the concealer to stay intact. So just gently pat that right underneath your eyes to completely set it. And right where you see those harsh lines from the powder, you, you wanna take the powder puff from the bottom and just go lightly where those harsh lines are to completely blend that out. This will ensure that you have a really nice smooth transition from your powder to your contour. As you can see, all that oil and concealer has been set in place and this is how it's going to look all day. So you also wanna do the same thing for your chin area and your forehead. Basically, you want to set all the areas that you applied concealer which was under our eyes and at the center of our face and then after setting your concealer you want to go ahead and set your foundation to absorb all the excess oils and to also make it stay in place so powders are normally used to set all your liquid and cream products because they tend to get oily if you don't do it so to do that you want to use a kabuki brush it picks up a lot of powder and it helps to distribute it evenly all over your skin to set your foundation in place perfectly so you just want to gently pat that on your skin you don't want to rub it or move it around because you're going to move around the foundation you want to just gently pat it focusing on the areas where you applied your foundation which is at the perimeter of your face and also on your forehead and like i mentioned with powder foundations they tend to have a lot of coverage so you want to make sure to build up the product or your makeup could appear cakey if you apply too much if you're enjoying this video so far please don't forget to give it a like down below below and lets me know that these videos are really helpful and will allow me to produce more of these videos now after you've applied all these products you might notice that your skin looks a little bit too cool toned it just looks a little bit less skin like and to add that sun-kissed look so that it looks very healthy and very natural you want to use bronzer I know a lot of people don't find bronzer useful but I find that it adds that warmth to your skin so your skin looks natural it looks beautiful and glowy but it's it's also important to consider your undertone when selecting your bronzer. There's so many different types of bronzers out there. Powder bronzer, liquid bronzers, and cream bronzers. For a beginner, I would recommend just starting out with a powder bronzer because they're very simple, super easy to use, and won't complicate your makeup routine. So typically, a bronzer is supposed to add warmth to your skin. So you want to select a bronzer that is warm toned, very similar to your contour shade that is about two to three shades darker than your skin, but you want to select a shade that adds warmth that means a shade that looks bronzy a shade that has a little bit of orange or red in it to add warmth to your skin and that's the difference between contour and bronzer is contour is cool toned so more of a grayish brownish color and bronzer is more warm toned so it has a little bit of orange a little bit of red in it you can also use a powder foundation or a pressed powder for bronzer it's just the shade is what differentiates between a bronzer and a setting powder. So one that I love is Black Radiance Pressed Powder. This is in the shade Black Coffee. As you can see, this is more of a warm tone powder to me. It has a little bit of warmth in it that's going to perfectly add back that sun-kissed look that we naturally have on my skin. So to apply the bronzer, I normally like using a brush like this one. This is more of a tapered fan brush. This is going to allow you to focus the bronzer right where you need to apply it, which is normally above your cheekbones a little bit close towards your temples and your jawline so you want to pick up a little bit of that bronzer always dust off the excess so you're not applying too much and in circular motion you want to angle your bronzer like this and just 
softly apply it right above your contour. It is going to mix with your contour a little bit, but with this angle brush, it allows for better precision so that you're not applying it all over your cheekbones. As you can see, we can kind of see that warmth on my skin being added back. And if you just slowly build it up, it'll make sure that you're applying enough and not too much. The key here is to apply it in circular motion. This will make it look more natural. It won't look like just a line of bronzer on your cheekbones. It's gonna give it more of a softer look. And you wanna do the same thing for your temples. Your temples are normally adjacent to your eyebrows and you just wanna apply that in circular motion to diffuse it all over your forehead area. And you wanna take a little bit of that bronzer and focus it on your jawline area as well, just to give it a little bit of a structure. And you also wanna apply this in circular motion. Now, as you can see, you can kind of see a little bit of that brown warmth added back to my skin. I normally don't like applying too much because it can be a little bit unrealistic. And as a beginner, it's always important to build up your products to make sure you're not applying way too much. So your skin looks more natural. It looks like you have control with how much product you're applying on your skin. Now, after bronzer, you wanna go in with blush. Blush is one of my favorite parts of makeup because it adds color to your skin. So you always wanna select a color that matches your undertone. So for instance, if you have cool undertones, pink blushes or purple blushes look so stunning on cool undertones. And if you have warm undertones, then peach blushes or even orange blushes look absolutely stunning on warm undertones. Now, at the end of the day, it's all about preference. I sometimes use pink blushes even though I have warm undertones. I feel like it balances my undertones. So feel free to play around with all the different shades and figure out which one you like for your skin. So the reason why you want to apply blush is your skin tends to look really dull with all the brown that we've added on the skin. So adding something with a pop of color really helps to bring out your makeup look. There are also so many different types of blushes out there. You have liquid blushes, cream blushes, powder blushes, and shimmer blushes. It wouldn't really matter which one you select for your skin type. It's all about preference. So I would recommend a powder blush for a beginner just because they're really easy to apply and they're buildable. One that I love is the Beauty Bakery Bite Size Snackaroons Blushes. These come in so many different shades. I feel like it's easier to purchase a few to try them out to see which color you prefer with your makeup looks. Now, if you have a deeper and darker skin tone, it's important to use blushes that give a lot of pigment. And a lot of brands that have those types of blushes are brands like Juvia's Place and Elf Cosmetic. Blushes with high pigment and color payoff will allow the color to show up on your skin because some blushes tend to be ashy and you don't want that if you have deeper and darker skin tones. So to apply the blush, you wanna go in with a tapered brush such as this Real Techniques 400 Blush Brush. The reason why this is a perfect brush for blush is because it's flat on the sides, so it allows you to gently pat the blush right where your cheeks are and blend it up towards your temples. So you wanna pick up a little bit of that blush, dust off the excess, or you can swirl it at the back of your hand to get rid of too much blush and just gently pat that right above where we placed the bronzer and whatever's left on the brush you want to bring it upwards towards your temples this will allow the blush to look blended and not just sitting on top of your cheekbone it's gonna give more of a natural look so as you can see we're kind of creating a C with that blush right here and this will help lift your face it's also gonna give you more of a natural makeup look because it's going to start with high pigmentation around your cheek and then fade off as we're bringing it towards our temples. And as you can see, this adds much needed color to my skin. It gives me more of a girly look and it just looks absolutely stunning with a full glam makeup look and even a natural makeup look. Now, after all this hard work that we just did to our face, you wanna make sure that stays in place all day long. And that's when a finishing spray comes in place. Now, it's very important to note that finishing sprays are not called finishing sprays, they're described as finishing sprays because they're used as the last step of your makeup routine. So this is the Milani Make It Last Original Setting Spray. It's supposed to set your makeup in place so that it doesn't move, but it can be referred to as a finishing spray because it helps to finish your makeup to give it a natural finish. This has honestly been one of the most important steps in my makeup routine. So to spray this, you wanna spray it at a distance, I would say arm's length 
and you want to drench your whole face with the setting spray I realized that whenever I don't use this type of spray to spray my whole face my makeup never lasts long it always moves and it just never looks right at the end of the day so this will get your makeup to last all day to look the same it won't get cakey it's not gonna crease and it's not gonna transfer once you drench it with the setting spray you want to let it dry for a few minutes before applying anything on your skin this will ensure that it seals in the makeup it's kind of like a protective layer that covers your makeup so that it doesn't transfer it doesn't move around on your skin it just stays exactly how it is but it's important to note that before using this setting spray you want to make sure everything is blended don't use this product before you blend any of your makeup products because it's going to dry up and make it stay like that so once you seal it you can't move it around now once this has dried down for a few minutes I like to go back in with the powder puff that I use for the setting powder and around your nose area you just want to absorb all those excess oils because sometimes the setting spray can dry down and form a little bit of dewiness around that area so you want to mattify that to make sure that everything looks nice and matte however this area right here still looks nice and glowy to give your skin more of a natural finish the next you want to go ahead and line your lips with a lip liner I normally like overlining my bottom lips and then when it comes to my top lips I like to keep it exactly the shape of my natural lips without overlining it I feel like that gives you more of a powdier look that really helps add dimension to your lips you want to finish off with your favorite lipstick I normally like a really nice nude mauve lip and then go in with your favorite lip gloss and this is just my preference you don't have to use a lip gloss but it's also important to learn exactly how to apply eyeshadow especially if you're a beginner and that's why you have to watch this video because this video will give you the perfect guide in learning how to apply eyeshadow it's a very step-by-step -step and detailed video for beginners KLJ, welcome to a channel where